So looking at quiz 10 from fall 2023, um, we're looking at question number two and it asks you to, um, to consider the design of a full adder. So let's just kind of take a second. Let's say that we want to add bits together. We're looking for something that can essentially just give us the result that we want from adding two bits together. Now, when we're adding two bits together, there are on occasions where not only are we, already, are we adding two bits, one and one is a two, but then that gets carried out. So there's a carry out down here, and that carry out becomes the carry in on the next um, adjacent um, single or, or two bit um, addition. So now we have one, one, and zero, which again makes a two. We have a one, zero, one, which again makes a two. And so that one gets carried out and brought up. One and one is a two. And then one and one is a two. So these two numbers, although we're saying you're adding two bits at a time, but you have to have a carry in and you will um, often need a carry out. These two values, if we look at these in terms of base 10, you see that this number here is 16 and 3 or 19, and the number beneath it is 8 and 4 is 12, plus 1, 13. 19 and 13 is going to give us um, a 32. And if you look at the addition of these two, we end up with a 32 down here. So for our single, um, for our full adder, we need to have an input, right? So we need one input, another input, and those two bits are going to be added together. And those two bits that are added together will give us um, a sum. And in order for this to work out, that sum sometimes will end up with a carry out that has to go to the next, um, uh, our next adder. So this would be a carry out. And that carry out comes out here and then it's received as an input to the next one. So each of these full adders need an input that's a carry in so that it can do those three bits. And then there's an output that's a sum and an output that's a carry out. And then that continues on until we have all 32 bits. And then this would be another carry out. So that would be part of our answer, S0, S1. So S0, S1 etc. So what we have then is input, 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 three inputs and two outputs. So we have three inputs and we have two outputs. And we want to be able to specify for all of these inputs, all eight, right? Since we have three inputs, we'll have two to the three or eight different rows, eight possibilities. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we have those values going from zero all the way up to seven. So we have all eight possibilities. And we want to account if we're adding two bits and if there is a carry in, um, what would that be? So when we're adding those three bits, we have a sum of zero and a carry out of zero. If we're adding three bits, it could just be um, zero, zero. Let's say that we have something like 
0 and a 1 with no carry in, so the carry in would be a 0. We just simply want a carry out, a sum of 1, but there's no carry out. So whenever you have 3 bits, you're going to have a sum of 1, but no carry out. And whenever we have, um, let's say, we have two ones, you're going to, and there's no carry in. So two ones will just give us simply a two, zero and a one. So we'll have a carry out. So one and one will give us a zero plus the carry out. But notice, uh, let's make sure we do this correctly. Notice that when we had our one and a one, we had a zero plus the carry out. That one and one adds up to give us a two. That one and zero adds up to give us a one. Zero, zero, and one give us a one. So that's an easy way of looking at how to complete this table. One plus zero plus zero, those three bits together, will give us a one. One plus zero plus one will give us a two. One plus one plus zero is a two. One plus one plus one will give us a three. So knowing that we have these two outputs, we have two different truth, right? We have two different outputs. So with each output, there will be a function that corresponds to that. So for the sum, that function expressed in terms of its min terms would be, uh, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be 1, 2, and then 4 and 7. And for the carry out, it's going to be the sum of min terms, 3, 5, 6, and 7. Now, instead of writing this in terms of uh, all three literals, A, B, C, N, A, B, C, N, A, B, C, N, we could certainly do this. And then um, it would be prime prime for the first two literals, and then carry in is not. The next one is, the first one is prime. The second one is, or the third one is primed. We could continue this um, and not think about simplifying it. But first, we want to think about how we would simplify this first. So in terms of simplification, that was the second part of this problem. You were asked to provide the minimized sum of products um, expressions for, um, for the outputs of the full adder. So let's do that next. So if we consider um, we, that we have these two truth functions expressed as um, in canonical form or summation notation, um, let's first look at maybe the carry out. That carry out, that's a function of those three min terms. So we have A, B, carry in. And then also we have the same scenario. All eight possibilities have to be combined, ideally are combined to get us a simplified circuit. Um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Um, 0, 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then four, five, six, and seven. This will give us the simplified circuit for the sum, and this one is going to give us the simplified circuit for the carry out. For the carry out, we see that the min terms there are three, five, six, and seven. So three, five, six, and seven. And then for the sum, we see that it's one, two, four, and seven there. Now. With the sum, there's nothing we can do to simplify that. There are no 
adjacencies or no um, um, way that we can combine these to get a simplified circuit in our K-map. But for this one, with the carry out, we can combine in this manner. And when you simplify that, um, you'll see that you end up with A and C in. So when you look at those two, only the A doesn't change when looking at this one. And um, right, the A is constant and the carry in is constant. So that stays there. And then for that vertical, those two there, um, we only have the B and C in staying, uh, you know, not changing between the two. And then finally, we have for this one here, that can be simplified, those two can be simplified to B and um, A. Uh, similarly, for the sum, um, that one is going to, it looks like we're going to have four terms, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and A, B, C. None of those can, are simplified. So instead of being reduced to fewer literals, we have three terms in each one of them because there is no simplification like we saw before. Um, so we can look at each one of those. And that one, the first one is um, going to be, and that is A and then B prime, C prime. The next one is A prime, B prime. The next one is A, B, and C, nothing is primed. And then finally, the last one here is going to be A prime and B and C prime. And so that is the simplified circuit we have available to us. Um, it's about the best that we can do. Um, we also would have seen earlier that this is essentially um, uh, this one here would have been the exclusive ORing of A, B, and C, N. So you'll see that in your notes. And then this one here was, that's one way of thinking about that. And the other one here is um, the majority circuit, which is true if there are two or more ones. You can see that uh, by looking at the previous, right? Whenever you have two or more, we ended up with a one. Now, what I'd like to do though, is see how we can take these two circuits and um, express them. Um, and that's the next problem, or show this, this, this full ladder circuit derived from the simplified. So for these two, um, So let's go ahead and finish this up. Um, for this last one, you're asked to show the circuit for these two. And so since this has an AND gate, an AND gate, an AND gate, we know that there are three AND gates here. And then all three of those are or together. We just have to show these inputs from A, B, and C. So we'll show that. And then for the next one over here, we have one, two, three, four AND gates. So one, two, three, four AND gates. And those four AND gates are or together to give us the sum. These or, or together to give us the carry out. Um, and each of those 
will have three inputs. So the first one just had the A, B, and C. The next one had A prime, B, and C. Oops, let's double, let's redo that. So it's A prime, B prime. And then a C, and then just simply A, B, and C, and then A prime, B, and C prime. And then those are ORed together. So I need to connect these um, where I show the A, B, and C going into each one of these. What that final circuit will look like after you've connected those, I'll show here. So if you take those two um, Boolean functions and create the circuits, um, each one of those has A, B, and C um, as inputs. Notice that this one is just simply A and C, which was the carry in, and then B and C, and then this one was just A and B. This one here, A prime, B prime, with the carry in. This one was A prime, B, with the carry in. And again, one, two, three, four AND gates, one, two, three, four AND gates, all of those OR together, one, two, three on the left, AND gates, and all of those were OR together. And so what we have there is the, um, the circuitry needed to implement a full adder.